the unsurpassed, penetrating and perfect truth is seldom met with even in the hundred thousand myriad kalpas. Now we can see and hear it. We can remember and accept it. I vow to make the Buddha's truth one with myself. Homage to the Buddha, homage to the Dharma, homage to the Sangha. This morning I received an email from somebody who was having a really difficult time and just wanting a little comfort and help. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about faith and patience. Now it seems easy to talk about faith and patience when you aren't the person with the problem. You're not the person who's really struggling or having a very difficult time. Oh, just have faith, just have patience. But actually, um, it's not unfeeling. It actually is kind advice because, in fact, it's the very medicine for suffering in all its kind, in all its varieties. It's not an ideal, oh, I must find, have faith and patience and then everything will be okay and not only do I have my problems, but I've got to try and be some faithful, faith, patient, faithful person too. It's not like that. We just keep coming back to it. It's our practice that we keep returning to. Just the practice of faith and patience. Patience first. It's one of the six paramitas. Generosity, precepts, patience, effort, meditation, wisdom. And it can be the hardest one to practice. It doesn't look like much. It's not very impressive being patient. You know, doing something dramatic or being wise would be so nice. And But patience, you know, who's going to notice? when we're not biting somebody's head off. And none of us practice it perfectly. We all struggle with patience now and then. There's different things that different ones of us have problems with. Sometimes it's other people, it's ourselves, it's our situation, it's whatever, you know. But we all struggle with patience now and then. It's keeping to the precepts is part of it. Not biting somebody's head off giving into irritation at somebody, not grabbing the thing that we want, that we really shouldn't be grabbing at, or speaking against somebody else when it really mad at them, you know, just that restraint. All of these are the practice of patience, and usually no one else knows. We don't even notice that we're, you know, biting it back rather than say something unskillful, shall we say. It's a not doing. It's restraint. And often not doing something is a lot harder than doing something. When we're in pain, we're upset, or in a very difficult situation, we want to fix it, we want to do something. And the impulse is really strong. Just get this out of here. Get me away from this. I don't like it, you know. And often we can do something about it, but sometimes there's not a lot we can do, at least outwardly. So what do we do inwardly? Because that's really where the work lies. How do we deal with the uncomfortable, difficult things in life? As always, acceptance is the key that unlocks the gateless gate when we stop flinging ourselves against something, the gate might open inwards. You know? When we allow ourselves to soften and not just push against things. When we're resisting something, whether we want to resist or not, whether we like to be accepting but we still don't like it, this tension in the body, we're kind of bracing ourselves against something we don't want. And if you can feel that tension in the body, and just try to physically relax it. It helps a lot. In meditation, we can often do this because we can see that resistance or that not, I don't like this. And you can feel that tension in the body. And just to physically try to ease that, to relax it. It actually really helps right there. Just try to relax the body with the thing. When you're no longer bracing ourselves against the unwelcome thing. 
when we are braced against the unwelcome, this is more like grim endurance. And sometimes what we can do is to endure something, but it's not the same as patience. Because with patience, there's a softness there, the acceptance, the allowing it in, the unwelcome thing, to embrace it really, to do our best, to let it be there, to soften and accept it, it's a whole lot easier to bear because we're not forcing ourselves against something, flinging ourselves against that gate to take a breath. Just to take a breath is to practice patience before we say something, before we do something, or right in the middle of sitting in this situation. Just just take a breath and to allow the body to relax a little and to feel that breath. Take a minute to breathe and allow the breath to be deep and easy, not tight and shallow and harsh. It helps us to relax everything, body and mind together. Everything kind of eases just a bit. Just taking that moment to breathe gives us time to not react to something, the moment of not doing And it just helps us in all kinds of ways. Breathing is always good. Practicing patience and acceptance with the hard conditions of life. Sometimes things are really difficult. We may have a very difficult decision to make. Or we have a long and painful illness. Or some sudden loss. You know, somebody dies or we lose something precious to us. Or a problem with depression or anger or despair or fear or something. All of us have something. All of us have lots of things probably. But to practice patience and acceptance with these things and see them as the arising of karma, among other things. This karma that brought us to this situation And to practice patience and acceptance helps us to cleanse it because we're not just reacting blindly. We're taking that breath, stepping back, and not doing, not reacting, not getting upset or whatever it is. And if you can see our difficulties as the working out of karma, it's a whole lot easier to accept them. And Oh, that's why it's like this. It's not... Blind fate is not because God hates me. It's not because, you know, I'm just unfortunate and everything bad happens to me. It's karma. Not, in, not just karma, but that's a large, can be a large part of it. Karmic consequence of things that have happened in the past. And we can have compassion then. We can have compassion for that situation or for ourselves. Here I am struggling with this state of mind or struggling with this loss or illness or whatever it might be. And we can accept it much better. It's not judgment. I did something bad. It's not that. It's just what we have to work with right now. This is what I have to work with. To accept things done in the past, whether by me or whoever, not to... Not to blame, not looking for something or someone to blame, or not railing against the past or our circumstances, but just doing our best to accept what we have right now, here, today, this minute, this breath. Practicing patience is an active thing. It's not passive at all. We're not just resigning ourselves to something. We're doing something. We're constantly bringing ourselves back to stillness in this present moment because sometimes softness and acceptance is a lot harder, it would seem, than banging against something. However, in the long run, it's a lot better. It wear ourselves out less and it works better. It is an active thing active practice of stillness, seeing what's going on. What am I doing? You know, Why am I so upset about this? And can I just take a breath and just wait a moment and do nothing before I act or speak? 
We can't be patient at any other time than right now. We can't be patient about the past, it's gone. Being patient about the future was the wanting, maybe. But really, we can only be patient here, now, with this mind, at this moment. Whatever is happening right now is where we apply our patience and our awareness and our acceptance. Right here, right now, with whatever is going on, whether it is joyful, painful, happy or sad, joy and happiness can can be hard to be be patient with too. Sometimes we get all wildly excited about, oh, thank God, a moment of joy. (laughs) Then it's gone. So we might as well just enjoy it and then it's gone. But if you think, oh, lovely, enlightenment has come at last, you know, all my problems are over. I don't think so. They come back. (laughs) It would be nice, you know. Patience with other people who never seem to do quite what we'd like them to do or be quite the way we'd really like them to be. It's never quite like that. Everyone has their own difficulties and their own suffering and their own stuff that they're working with. And we may know nothing about it at all, even if we're close to them. We may not know what they're struggling with. You can never know what it's like to be another person, no matter how close you are. You really can't quite know. All we can do is practice patience and kindness with ourselves and others. It's hard being any human being living in this world. It's called the world of patience and not for nothing. Everybody has suffering, everybody has problems, everybody has things they struggle with. And to another person, they may not seem like much. But as you know, our own difficulties always seem harder. You know, our own states of mind, our own character faults, they always seem much more reprehensible or much more difficult than somebody else's somehow. Which brings us to ourselves, patience with ourselves, even harder. Patience with our frail body. Maybe we're getting older. It's not, the body is not doing quite what we'd like. It's not as strong as it used to be. It's getting old. It's not as reliable as it used to be. It lets us down now and then. To accept this, to be kind to the body and accept its limitations. This actually benefits to getting older. You have to slow down and maybe you um, don't rush around quite so much. This is a good thing. But sometimes... It's hard to accept when we can't do what we used to do. It can be hard, and yet we have to accept it with patience and just be kind to ourselves and to others. Patience with our states of mind, knowing that they will pass. Everything comes and goes. Even our heavy states of mind come and go, whether it's fear or depression, Sadness, despair, they all actually come and go moment by moment. They don't just sit there. It feels sometimes like it's just sitting there, but actually moment by moment it's changing and they're coming and moving through and we are doing something just by sitting with them, accepting them and not judging them or trying to push them away, just to let them go through. Not easy. Patience with our imperfect training. You know, I'd like to be wiser, better, nicer, kinder, more enlightened. Our faults, our distracted mind. Patience with our impatience. You know, patience when training seems dry and we're just trudging through the desert. Some of us are, I guess, the world-class desert travelers, and. <laughs> It just seems like most of our training is just longing on. And nothing seems to be changing very much. And yet it does change. And just that faithful effort without expecting something, but not giving up, it's not resignation. It's acceptance and going on with whatever we have to deal with. Trusting that we are on the right path, even when we don't see an oasis or a palm tree in sight, we are on the right path, that we keep on going. And if we're wandering off, maybe a friend will point it out and just say, just over there a bit, you'll find water. You know, or 
over there a little bit is the right way. But even if water seemed a long way off, just to keep on going, taking advice and trusting the heart that leads us. True patience is the relinquishment of self. <clears throat> Impatience is the arising of self. I want something else. I don't like this. I don't like a state of mind. I want this to be over. I want to get such and such. Or I want to be some other way than I am right now. I do want to be nicer, you know, kinder, more patient, <laughs> and all that. And true patience embraces all of that. It embraces our impatience and all our daft states of mind with kindness and maybe a little humor. You know? Here we are again, just being ourselves. You know? Same old thing, maybe, but always different. Not expecting something or looking for some ideal situation. If only it was like this, if only I had such and such, if only people were this way or things were this way, if only I was better and so, and so forth, then everything would be fine. My problems would go away and it would be all right. Well, no, actually we get different problems probably. And um, it's never going to be ideal. It's always going to be imperfect. And that very imperfection is what helps us on our way. Because if everything was perfect, we'd have nothing to do. We'd probably be bored stiff in five minutes. Maybe we wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe we'd like to try it. But it's not likely to happen any time soon that suddenly everything is perfect. So we just accept things as they are as best we can, ourselves as, they, as we are, and try to practice kindness, patience, acceptance, as always, you know. Faith. To practice true patience is to practice faith, because that's really what we're talking about, is just trusting. Because patience is not the same as resignation, we're just sort of looking down. True patience is a positive thing, it's looking up. Trusting that things are in fact as they should be, no matter what they look like that actually we have what we need. And maybe we have the very situation we need. Difficult as it may be, it may be the very thing that we need to help move us on in our way. We just don't really know because things are a lot more profound than we know. You're not really in charge of our training or our life or anything at all, actually. All we can do is do our best. In faith... Trusting that things are as they should be, no matter how we feel about them. And that we can work with them and do our best. We can find our way through. That we can train in all the conditions of our lives and use them to help us. Faith that this is so. And that makes it possible to do. We have to have faith in ourselves and our own aspiration our own true nature, that which wishes for the best, wishes to do the best, and wishes to realize the great matter. When things are really hard, we can ask for help from the Buddhas and ancestors, from Avalokiteshvara, from Kishtigarbha, from, you know, whoever, from our friends, our friends in the Sangha, friends who are not part of the Sangha, our relatives, people we know, to ask for help. And just the asking opens us up to that help, whether it's for another human being or from Buddha nature. However we choose to look at it or however we practice it, to be willing to ask for help and not think, I can do this all by myself in isolation because it's not so. We're all connected. We all help each other. And we all can ask for help. We all need help. None of us can actually train in a vacuum or live in a vacuum. We all need other people. Sometimes we ask for help and it doesn't seem to appear. We don't get Buddhas turning up and helping us out or the perfect answer to our problems or whatever. But we may get through the night. And sometimes that's all we need just to get through the night. You know, we do have what we need, actually. 
It doesn't have to be dramatic. And to see this is to practice faith. You don't need the great voice from the sky, just that we can keep going. We have the strength to keep going and the patience to do so. The faith that we do have what we need and that our present situation can help us to relinquish something, to go deeper, to accept and to bow. Faith is the willingness to sit still in the midst of all conditions, whether we feel we have faith or not, just willingness to practice it, to practice patience. Whether we can see clearly or not, whether we're suffering greatly or having great joy, trudging through the desert, just sitting still in the present moment, letting go of the past and the future, all we have at this moment right now. This is the only place where you can practice patience and faith. Just sitting still within all of it. That's what really helps us. And that's our talk for the day. Thank you.